This video will briefly cover some of the new features we have in Photoshop CS5 and CS5 Extended for video professionals. Starting with the most exciting news of all is that Photoshop is now running natively on 64-bit systems. This means that, essentially, Photoshop can now access all the memory on your system. Also, day-to-day -day imaging tasks will be up to 10% faster and even greater when working with large files. This brings huge performance improvements for all our customers, especially important for video professionals. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop now and take a look at some of the new features we have. Starting off with Bridge. Um, essentially what we've done in CS5 is taken Bridge and put it into a panel in directly into Photoshop. So what this means now is I have many of um, Bridge's capabilities directly in Photoshop. I can browse my files quickly. Um, I can do things like drag and drop to the application. Um, you can see I have my nice path here in the top uh, top left, as well as I can view my subfolders. Um, I can do batch processing, select multiple files, and place them into Photoshop or run different commands. Um, I have my full screen previews I can do. I can scroll through my images. You can see that I can even view uh, video animations in full screen directly from Photoshop. So you can see that this brings a lot of benefits to our customers. Essentially, you can get to your files faster, um, as well as the fact that you don't have to launch, launch a separate application every time you want to look for your images. And further, um, Photoshop doesn't have to be sharing resources with BigBridge anymore. Essentially, you can have um, the ability to browse your files directly in the application and um, save all your memory um, allocations just for Photoshop. Okay, now let's jump into some of the core competencies or core improvements that we have in Photoshop CS5, um, starting with what we've done with selections. Now, often uh, making selections um, for alpha channels or selections for composites uh, can be pretty difficult to finesse, especially if you're working with um, a complex backdrop or um, a particularly bright color um, where you'll get some of the color fringing showing through on transparent areas. And also, of course, on edges with uh, more transparency, uh, things like hair, um, that can be pretty challenging to select out. Well, you'll be happy to know that in Photoshop CS5, we've done a lot of improvements to directly address these types of challenges that our customers have. So let's go ahead and open up an image here. Um, now say I have, I'm working with this image here and I actually want to uh, swap out this model, uh, take her out and put another model in here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this file and uh, let's turn on this layer and another great feature that we have now in CS5 is the ability to do scrubby zoom. So with my zoom tool here I can essentially click and drag to the right or drag to the left to quickly zoom in and out of my image pretty cool. Alright, so with this uh, selection here, or with this uh, layer here, I'm going to go ahead and load up a selection that I've made a quick with my quick select tool and pop into my refined edge dialog. Alright, so here I have my basic uh, rudimentary selection that I'm starting with. Uh, let's go ahead and pop up the radius here to about 70. Now what the radius does is essentially uh, draw a radius around the selection edges. So you can see if I click this show radius option, you can see what's happening here. There's essentially a radius around the selection. Um, new in Photoshop CS5 is the ability to turn on Smart Radius. Now what Smart Radius essentially will do is define or uh, detect for you hard edges versus soft edges. And edges that are hard, they'll tighten up the uh, radius here. And for edges that are soft, they'll leave that uh, radius at the maximum that you determine here, which is 70 pixels. So you can see I've turned that on and um, along the hat area, the hard edge, you can see it's tightened up that radius and on the sides here where there's hair or more transparency, um, a softer edge, it essentially keeps that radius at a broader level, giving you much more of a um, complete selection. So let's go ahead and turn off this radius. And another great improvement that we have in CS5 with this refined edge option is the ability to paint in or erase uh, further uh, refinements. So with this tool, I can paint in areas that I want Photoshop to uh, rerun the algorithm to make a tighter refinement. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in on the right side of this uh, woman's hair. And you're going to see that uh, Photoshop does a much better job at removing that red background. Um, 
Also, as I mentioned, a particularly challenging task is uh, removing color fringe. Now, if you remember, this woman is uh, actually cut out of a, a red background here. And you can see a little bit of this color fringe showing through here. There's a slight red tint here um, on this edge here with higher transparency. Now what I'm going to do is choose this option, uh, decontaminate colors. Now notice here, um, as soon as I click it, you can see that it's removed this uh, red color fringe. Um, that was a, a very challenging task to do prior to CS5. Um, also in this output section of my refined edge is the ability to output to different layer types. So I can directly output to a layer mask, say OK, and you can see here that I've quickly made a selection. This next feature that I want to show you is what we're calling Content Aware Fill, and it's really going to benefit anyone who finds themselves uh, cleaning up images by needing to remove certain objects or elements um, from images or perhaps from video frames in Photoshop. So uh, let's go ahead and open up a different image. Let's start with this image here. And um, say I actually want to come in here and remove this cyclist. Now I'm going to go ahead and load up a selection that I made with my quick select tool. And now we have the option of content aware fill. So what this means is I can actually choose this option from the fill dialog and fill in those pixels with respect to what's around the background, to, uh, to around the outside of the selection edges. So I'm going to choose OK. And you're going to see Photoshop really does a magical job at removing the pixels uh, with respect to what is around the edges. Great. So you can see that Photoshop did a pretty good job. However, it left a, a couple of artifacts here, um, the tree trunks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the other implementation of Content Aware Fill, and that's through the Spot Healing Brush. So I can come in here and choose my Spot Healing Brush, and up here in my Options bar, I have a Content Aware option where it's going to run the same algorithm, um, filling in pixels uh, with respect to the background. So you can see I did a great job here at removing these artifacts. Further, I can even come in here and perhaps remove this uh, building in the background. You can see here that Content Aware Fill does a phenomenal job at uh, removing pixels or artifacts from your image. So the next feature I want to show you is what we've done with 32-bit HDR imaging. Um, essentially, we've greatly uh, given this tool a complete turnaround. Uh, we've made it much more discoverable, much more easier to use, and giving you much better results. So um, essentially what people are wanting to do with HDR is take multiple images set at different exposure levels. Uh, for instance, let's take a look at these images here. And you can see I've taken them at different exposure levels, and I have details in the highlights, um, as well as details in the dark areas. I can merge them together into a single image to give me to the ultra-realistic uh, look, matching um, what the human eye can see in terms of uh, details in both the light and the dark areas.